This is such a beautiful sight. Forty days and forty nights, my air hadn't been working. It was my own personal Lent. Hi, and welcome to Quilt Meets World, where we have adventures in piecing and joy. I'm Russ. Come on into my sewing room. So I'm going to get this out of the way first. I am a little sick. Uh, it seems to happen apparently regularly this time of year. I was looking at my time hop yesterday, the day before, and I was complaining about how difficult it is to get into the Dayquil bubble pack thingies, uh, which, you know, when you're sick, you don't want to be working and dealing with all of that. It's mostly congestion. Uh, last night, I was up half the night because my nose was stuffed. So that's a lot of what you're hearing. Uh, this morning, I managed to get to the local drugstore and grab me some Dayquil, uh, or rather the wall brand, and some nasal spray. So that is helping. My nose is feeling better. But a lot of the true test is going to be tonight when I try to sleep. So give me some good vibes. Hopefully this goes away in a day or two like it normally does. Uh, like it, it happens fairly regularly this time of year. Wonder if there's like an allergy that wasn't tested for when I did all my allergy testing all those years ago, or it could be something that just recently has come up. I don't know. I'm not bothered with it. It's just you know a couple of days. Air conditioning update. Uh, you saw in the teaser that I do have air conditioning. The part came in on Tuesday. Uh, they came this past Friday to install it because they initially wanted to come Thursday. That's our in-office day. And I wasn't going to let my boss get in a little bit of trouble if they happened to audit this week for making sure that people are coming in the office. So Friday it was the first one that he had brought. Uh, he was tightening in the drain valve, drain line, and it sheared off and he couldn't get it out. So that one was labeled as, I guess, defective. He ended up having to bring it up to Kennesaw. They had something up there. I don't know if it was a replacement or if they just replaced the pan or what. But the second one that he brought, he was able to get installed. And about 3 p.m., he started it up. And I was very excited. The thing that concerns me and I'm a little confused about is he said my system was overcharged. Uh, science, science stuff. I don't know. I haven't really gone into the research yet. Apparently, there is a sweet spot for the amount of refrigerant in the system. <laughs> he took out six pounds of refrigerant, which is a little strange because my system is supposed to have anywhere between two and six pounds based on a little bit of research that I did. So I don't know if it's properly working right. Uh, I think I started not feeling well Friday midday. Uh, so uh, at nighttime, it doesn't feel cool upstairs. And I don't know if that's because I'm not feeling well or if it is because it's not properly cooling like I'm accustomed to. Maybe this is how it's supposed to be cooling. It's keeping up with the weather. It's been, well, it's going to be 93, 94 today. And it's keeping the temperature pretty good. And it's mostly level in the house, which is really surprising me because upstairs is usually like 7, 8, 10 degrees warmer than downstairs. So maybe I was overcharged with my refrigerant and everything's going to be fine. Uh, I'm going to wait until I'm not sick before I decide if I need to complain because like I said, I don't know if it is going on with this and you know, I don't want to have somebody come over and be like, look, you're sick. I don't want to, I don't want to come in the house because yeah, I'd be saying the exact same thing. The other interesting story this week is I could have died in a fiery blaze this past week. It is very scary is actually about as scary as I am, you know, pseudo exaggerating. On Tuesday night, I commuted home from work. There was no issues, nothing out of the ordinary. I got home about 5.30. Uh, woke up Wednesday. I got myself showered, got Riley walked, and I didn't have any breakfast in the house because 
I'm not doing things to make dishes because I don't want to heat up the house any more than I have to. So I said, I want to go to Chick-fil-A. Hop in the car and it doesn't start. Uh, I tried to do the uh, button to open up the garage door. Uh, and I'm realizing there's no lights on in the car. A little strange, but that just tells me the battery's dead. I sent a text out to all the neighbors saying, hey, does anybody have jumpers? Because my jumpers were in the trunk and I can't open up the trunk except through a push button. Uh, it doesn't have an actual key spin to open up the trunk. So I'm just like, how am I going to have to manage in an emergency like this? My next door neighbors, uh, they had a small portable charger. We connected everything up and it wasn't registering like it knew anything was going on. And he had never used it, so he didn't really know how it worked. So we attributed that to the unknown. Uh, the next option that we had was maybe just roll the car down and get a traditional jump. And that involved, you know, getting out of the garage. The problem is the stick shift. Okay. I, I don't want to say stick shift, the gear shift because I can't drive a stick. I know I'm one of those people. I tried to learn. I did try to learn. I just kept stalling out and probably just need a little bit more practice. But the gear shift is stuck in, I'm going to say park because that's where I left it, uh, unless you uh, can get your foot on the brake and all the other electronics going on. Without the electronics, I can't do that. I went upstairs to grab a screwdriver to do the manual shift unlock. When I got down, another neighbor had arrived. Uh, I have some awesome neighbors in the neighborhood. They are lovely people. And we tried her portable charger. Same thing. It, we connected and it was doing beeps. And we were looking at the beep code instructions. And the list of possible things that it could have been was like eight or ten. And we're like, we don't know what any of these are because it's anywhere from you got it backwards to, you know, the car's going to explode. A little bit of, you know, foreshadowing. So uh, next door neighbor went to get his extra long jumper cables and we pulled the other neighbor's SUV as close as we could into the garage. Uh, it's a little bit of a tight squeeze because it's a mess right now. My fault, not theirs. And uh, we get everything connected. We see the actual spark so we know everything is working. And like 30 seconds later, hop in the car and it starts up. So I said, okay, I've got a lifetime warranty on my battery and the battery is not supposed to die like that. So I went straight to the dealership. The dealership is about three miles away and I went there. I left the car running because I was like, I don't want them to have to jump the car again uh, just to get anything moved, which again is probably a little bit of a mistake. Uh, talked to them, said battery was dead this morning. And of course, you know, they're like, that's not a good thing. Like, yeah, that's why I'm here. They bring it to the back and within five minutes, the service manager comes to me and says, okay, tell me the story. I'm a little confused because I'm like, I told the same story three or four times. Uh, yeah, three or four times, just really to the service te uh, desk guy. So I tell him everything I just told you. And I told him that, you know, I've had times in the past where I would have a little bit of a delayed start. I would bring everything in here and nobody could find anything wrong. Uh, the last time that they actually determined something was wrong, they faulted the battery and had replaced that battery. And that was March of 2020. So it was right as these times were starting. Uh, and... Like, I didn't think anything of it. And he says to me, so there's a problem. I'm like, okay. He's told me that my battery was boiling hot. It was like just boiling out. And one of two things was going to happen. I was either going to uh, have the battery explode and become a fiery blaze, as batteries that explode tend to do, because you 
can't do anything to stop that chain reaction. Or it would decide to calm down and they would be able to replace the battery. And I was like, okay, let me get my laptop out of the trunk because my laptop was stuck in the trunk. If my laptop hadn't been in the trunk, I probably would have just said, okay, I'm just going to start working and deal with it later. Again, thankfully I didn't. Uh, I was a little strange finding out that, you know, it was bulging and acid was coming out of it because, and, and that it was hot because when we were trying to do the jumping, everything looked fine. There was like a couple little pieces of corrosion on the leads, but you know, that's normal for a battery that is three and a half years old. So about 90 minutes later, the service tech came in and showed me pictures. He said he got it removed and it was covered in acid and you can see the uh, bulging of it. So I did thank him and said, thank you for not risking your life whenever, you know, it was boiling and thankfully it calmed down and everything. You were able to do your job. And they had to check everything out to make sure that, you know, the alternator wasn't pushing in too much juice into the battery and that there was nothing else faulty in the systems. They replaced the battery. Uh, thankfully again, the lifetime warranty. So $27 later, I was out with another brand new battery. Uh, it was about noon. So I stopped at McDonald's, grabbed a bite to eat. It wasn't a good breakfast, but what can you do? So I was thankful that, you know, it happened on Wednesday, which is my normal work from home day and not a day that I was trying to get into the office. Uh, I was thankful that I was smart enough to go straight to the dealership uh, instead of, you know, stopping at Chick-fil-A to get breakfast because I really wanted it. I'm thankful that I didn't start running my air conditioning because I don't know what that extra stress on the battery would have done. Uh, so yeah, there, there was a chance that in that, I'm going to say five minute drive from my house to the dealership, it could have cascaded out of control and I would have been you know, a side thing. Uh, Slightly amusing, my really awesome electrician works for the fire department uh, when he's not, you know, fixing people's wires. And I sent him a text and said, would you have been uh, working when that call could have come through? And he had just uh, ended his shift at eight o'clock that morning, that morning. So he wouldn't have been able to have been on it. But I was just joking that it would have been hilarious if he had been called. And I would have gone out there and said, hi, Jeff, it's my car that's on fire. <laughs> Here in the sewing room, I got a bit done, but not quite as much as I had been hoping for. Uh, work had been a little bit crazier than I expected. Uh, and, you know, I should have expected it because I'm off this coming week. And when I'm off for more than, you know, two days, I have to make sure that you know, everything that I do is uh, put into the list of anybody who is still in the office. So I had to do a lot of extra work just to get those things ready. I did get the two quilts trimmed that had been done, uh, and I got the baby quilt loaded onto the long arm. Uh, it's not started yet uh i was planning on doing that this morning but uh my awesome friend shannon of slay arts she was doing is doing because i see her right there uh an all day sew on youtube so i joined her for a couple hours uh while i was on the live with her though i did manage to get my friend stephanie's autumn box uh, autumn project box completed. So the entire quilt top is done. It's back there on the uh, pressing mat. I got to get the last seam pressed and also make sure that everything is pointing the correct direction. I try to make sure everything was right as it was going, but you know how a rope can get upside down unexpectedly as you're in the middle of sewing. So I feel like I got quite a bit done. It's not quite all that I wanted to, but as I said, I have this week off, and even though I'm feeling a little under the weather, I am hoping to get a lot done this week.
I did get one cool new thing this week. Uh, this is the kit. Well, this is the back of the kit, part of the panel. Uh, this is more of the fabrics in it. Uh, I'm throwing up a picture of the finished quilt top. Uh, it is going to be for a friend of mine. Uh, I'm excited to do this so. Uh, I think it's going to be a perfect Christmas gift for them. There is a huge story involved with it, but I want to wait until the quilt is done before I give you guys the story as to why I uh, purchased this kit. It just happened to fall into my lap at the right time. Uh, it arrived yesterday. I was very excited. The curving pieces that are in there, uh, they're done with a template. The pattern has a printable, well, it's already printed, template that you could trace onto freezer paper. Uh, I'm not that comfortable doing that. So I ordered the template from the fabric designer, pattern designer, that's our pattern designer, and it will arrive tomorrow. So I really can't do anything with this kit until tomorrow. I'm already drooling over the fabric. It's gorgeous fabrics. And like I said, I am excited for uh, the end person that it's going to go to. For goals this week, as I said, I'm off this week. So uh, I have a lot of spare time that I can do things. Uh, and though I am a little bit under the weather right now, hopefully that you know fixes itself tomorrow. I don't like being sick on the end of the day. It's just horrible. Uh, the first thing on my list is to finish all the quilts all the way. Uh, that means it is binding for two of them and then quilting, trimming, and binding for the baby quilt. Like I said, it's on the long arm. I could probably start working on that tonight because I don't think it'll take that long to long arm. Uh, we'll see what my energy levels are. Uh, the next thing on my list is triangles. Uh, I know that I am off this week, so there are no excuses. I saw the pile of strips that I need to cut. So my plan is to spend like two or three hours just standing there at my cutting mat doing absolutely nothing but cutting triangles. It's going to be a lot of work to force myself not to look at my phone, to not pay attention to what's happening on YouTube, uh, not turn and focus on whatever movie might be playing. I don't even know what I'm going to have on. Uh, I may end up having to just have music on just so that I can focus. But I need to get those triangles done because then I can start sewing the triangles together and then that quilt will start going a lot faster. Uh, I have two more quilts to sew the strips and cut the triangles out. Uh, Maybe I'll have a chance to start working on some of that. I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with that yet. Uh, the other one is uh, Lilacia by Lackia, uh, whatever way we want to pronounce it. Uh, I did a little bit of research, and I guess it's really pronounced Lilacia, uh, but I like the way that Stephanie was pronouncing it, Lilacia, because it's lilacs, so that's why. Uh, we are week three and it'll be week four tomorrow, kind of a five week project. So I really need to get caught up. Uh, they look to be fairly small, uh, blocks that have to be done, even though I think one of them has quite a few, but I think that will be a very easy palette cleanser after I get all the triangles cut, uh, just to, you know, give myself a little bit of reward because those fabrics are gorgeous to work with, and I'm very excited. So that's about it for today. Uh, I apologize that my voice sounds a little cracky and stuff. Like I said, a little sick, but I needed to make sure that I got y'all updated about the air situation and let you see that gorgeous, gorgeous uh, quilt that I had ordered. Uh, I am going to put links to some of these things in the show notes below, uh, they are not affiliate links. So if you purchase anything, you're purchasing them on their own. Uh, if you want, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. It doesn't cost you anything, but it really helps the channel to grow. I hope you have a great rest of your day and an awesome week. And until next time, stay happy and keep stitching.